Hey there, deck builders! Welcome back to another episode of Super Budget Commander. I'm your host, Alex, and I've got a great build in store for you today. As always, a Super Budget Commander deck is fun to play, $50 max price, and most cards in the deck cost less than $1. Once again, thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Taigum Ojitai Master is one of the best spell slinging commanders available. Every instant sorcery and dragon spell you cast can't be countered by spells or abilities. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, if Taigum attacked this turn, that spell gains rebound. Basically, every instant or sorcery spell you cast, you get to pay the cost once and cast the spell twice. Now that's some serious value. There are only six creatures in this entire deck. The first two, Curious Homunculus and Burnished Heart, are here to help mana ramp. Flipping the Homunculus creates a creature with prowess that makes spells cheaper to cast, perfect for a spell slinger build. Next on the list are Monastery Mentor and Tolerand Sky Summoner. Monastery Mentor is a bit expensive. His ability and the monk tokens he creates are just too good to not include. Tallrand is essentially the same as Monastery Mentor. Cast spells, create tokens, overwhelm your enemies. Avon Wind Guide and Docent of Perfection are more of the same. The Wind Guide makes our tokens into super soldiers. Docent of Perfection is similar to Tallrand. Cast spells and fill the board with wizard tokens. If the Docent flips, get ready for a wizard party. <laughs> Just a heads up, there's a lot of removal in this deck. We'll start things off with the classic, Swords to Plowshares. Next up is Rapid Hybridization. When in doubt, turn that nasty threat into a 3-3 Lizard instead. Disenchant and Reality Shift are both versatile removal spells. Reality Shift is especially popular lately, and for good reason. Turning a massive, indestructible threat into a pathetic 2-2 is always fun. Snap and Into the Royal let us bounce permanents back to our opponent's hands. Snap is great because you can untap two lands after casting it, so it basically pays for itself. Into the Royal can bounce any artifacts or enchantments that are bothering us, and if it's kicked, you can draw a card too. Spells that put our opponent's permanents back on top of their library are super effective. Oust and Unexpectedly Absent are great ways to trip up your opponents and set them back a few turns. Staying on theme, Repulse and Capsize are here to help us bounce anything we don't like. Capsize is particularly great at temporarily disabling any permanent on the board that's causing trouble. If you're looking to blow up the board, Fell the Mighty and Rout are here to help. Fell the Mighty is particularly awesome because you can keep a token army you've built up alive while destroying any opposing armies. You love them, your friends hate them. Counter spells. We'll start this section off with Mana Leak and Negate. Both are cheap to cast and great at making your friends hate you. Hindering Light is a fantastic counter spell. Stop that spell that's trying to destroy Tygum and draw a card. Counter spell is a classic. I know it's a lot to take in. It's a very complicated card. I doubt your friends will be silent when you hit them with Render Silent. It's like Silence and Counterspell had a baby. Aww. Rewind is great. Counters a spell, untaps your lands, and leaves room to keep slinging spells. What does Blue want? More cards. When do we want them? Now! Opt and Ponder are great one-drop card draw spells. Both allow you to investigate what's on top before drawing a card. 
Plus, with Tygum's second ability active, you'll get to use their effects twice. Preordain and Brainstorm are just a few more solid one-drop card draw spells. Both allow you to dig for the spells you need and keep your hand full of powerful cards at the same time. Anticipate and Telling Time are fantastic ways of putting useful cards in your hand and moving cards you don't want out of the way. Digging through your deck can only get you closer to the answers you need and help you interrupt your opponent's plans. Impulse is an improved Anticipate. Scoping out the top of your library is always great. Compulsive Research helps refill your hand and can be used to intentionally fill your graveyard with spells you can cast later. Great card. Windfall can refill your hand in a pinch, but it's most useful at forcing your opponents to wheel away a hand they've been holding on to. Fact or Fiction is basically a staple blue spell. Most of the time it ends up being a lose-lose situation for your opponents, no matter how they split the piles up. Foresee is another classic blue spell. Manipulate the top of your library, then draw some cards. Treasure Cruise is at its best late in a game when your graveyard is stuffed to the gills and you just need to refill your hand. Getting rebound on our spells depends on Tygum being able to attack every turn. Artful Dodge, Slip Through Space, and the multitude of spells like them are here to help. Slip Through Space is nice because it lets us draw a card too. Shadow Rift, great name for a card by the way, functions similarly to Slip Through Space. Make Tygum unblockable and draw a card. Make a Stand buffs up and protects your token army in case of a board wipe. Rounding things out, I have spells like Open the Armory and Dawn Charm. Open the Armory is an excellent tutor card. As you'll see in a bit, there's a lot of cool artifacts and aura enchantments in this deck. Dawn Charm is versatility at its finest. It does a little bit of everything, and it does it all well. Azoria's Charm is everything we want in this deck. Lifelink for a massive token army, card draw, and removal all in one package. Relearn is an easy way to bring back a spell we already used or discarded, and you use it again. Plea for Power is a friendly extra turn spell, if there is such a thing. If the table votes to not let you take an extra turn, you get to draw three cards. I consider that a win either way. Ojitai's Command is similar to Azorius Charm in its versatility. It allows you to do a little bit of everything. Lastly, we have Rise from the Tides. This spell is meant to end games. It's especially effective late game with a graveyard full of cards. As an added bonus with Tygum's abilities, it can't be countered and you get to cast it twice. Artifact ramp is really important here. I've chosen to stick primarily with low cost mana rocks that can get Tygum out quickly. The goal with these mana rocks is to be able to produce both colors of mana we need or be able to sacrifice them for extra cards in a pinch. Mana Ramp is the foundation of any deck. It's impossible to play spells if you never have the mana to cast them. I've chosen four equipment spells specifically catered to Tygum. The first is Rune Chanter's Pike. This powers up Tygum and helps prevent him being killed off by pesky chump blockers. Sword of the Animist is my favorite equipment spell in Magic. It's also a fantastic card, especially in a deck like this one that's reliant on artifacts to help ramp. Ring of Evos Isle can power up Tygum with counters and make him difficult to remove. Whisper Silk Cloak is perfect evasion, attack without fear of being blocked to death. Similar to the equipment, the enchantments in this deck are few, but powerful. Aqueous Form and Steel of the Godhead turn Tygum into an unblockable force. Jace's Sanctum helps you cast spells for a lower cost and draw more efficiently. Skywise Teachings is an effective way to create token creatures, especially in a deck where casting spells is the name of the game. Metallurgic Summonings is a super token creator. Every instant and sorcery spell will net you a construct token. With so many instant and sorcery spells to choose from, it's likely that this enchantment constructs a lot of tokens. <laughs> There are 33 lands in this deck, 7 planes, and 20 islands make up the basic lands. Bant Panorama, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse help us fix our mana. 
and Azorius Guildgate, Command Tower, and Tranquil Cove give us a few dual lands to help round things out. Thank you so much for tuning in, you rock! Let me know in the comments below, which commander should I deck tech next? If you like this video and want more like it, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. You can also connect with us on social media, those links are in the description below. Stay classy deck builders, and I'll see you next time.